ัสดีค่ะฮันนี่ชลพันษาเนเวล่านะคะและขอต้อนรับคุณผู้ชมทุกท่านเข้าสู่วันที่2ของการจัดงาน Startup Thailand and Innovation Thailand Expo 2020นะคะซึ่งก็จัดขึ้นตั้งแต่ระหว่างวันที่1ถึงวันที่4กันยายนนะคะในรูปแบบของการจัดงานปีนี้ก็คือ Virtual World สอดรับกับยุค New Normal นั่นเองค่ะงานในครั้งนี้ก็เกิดขึ้นโดยความร่วมมือระหว่างหลายฝ่ายด้วยกันนะคะซึ่งผู้ที่เรียกได้ว่าเป็นแม่งานหลักเลยก็คือสำนักงานนวัตกรรมแห่งชาติองค์การมหาชนกระทรวงการอุดมศึกษาวิทยาศาสตร์วิจัยและนวัตกรรมนะคะร่วมมือกับหน่วยงานภาครัฐภาคเอกชนทั้งในประเทศและต่างประเทศกว่า133องค์กรกว่า400หน่วยงานนะคะเพื่อที่จะขยายโอกาสทางธุรกิจให้แก่ธุรกิจสตาร์ทอัพยังรวมไปถึงผู้ประกอบการอีกด้วยค่ะและในวันนี้เนี่ยนะคะเราก็อยู่ในเวทีฟอรัมซึ่งถือว่าเป็นหนึ่งใน4กิจกรรมหลักของการจัดงานนั่นเองนะคะและแนวคิดของการเสนอในวันนี้ครอบคลุมเรื่องของ Tourism and Entertainment Rebound ก็ถือว่าเป็นหนึ่งใน6ธีมที่สำคัญมากๆเลยนะคะเพราะฉะนั้นเรามาเริ่ม Presentation แรกของวันนี้กันเลยดีกว่านะคะณ NIA Virtual Studio ของเราค่ะสถานการณ์การแพร่ระบาดของไวรัสโควิดนั้นก็ส่งผลกระทบมากมายทั้งต่อเศรษฐกิจสังคมแล้วก็วิถีชีวิตความเป็นอยู่นะคะนำมาซึ่งความที่เราจะต้องมีการเว้นระยะห่างหรือว่า Physical Connection ที่ลดลงไปแต่ที่พบก็คือจะมีเรื่องของการเชื่อมต่อผ่านสังคม Virtual มากขึ้นในเรื่องนี้นั้นจะส่งผลกระทบต่อ Connection และ Trust อย่างไรนะคะประเด็นแรกน่าสนใจค่ะโดยสปีกเกอร์ของเรานั้นท่านเป็น Founder ของ Project Norwich มิสเตอร์จินซูอันนะคะและในช่วงนี้เรามี Moderator พิเศษด้วยค่ะท่านก็คือกรรมการของบริษัทไนลันไทยแลนด์แอนด์ไทม์อัพแบงคอกคุณพงศิริเหตุกูลสวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับเชิญเลยค่ะโอเคครับโอเค so good morning every um, audience that uh, that's with us um, today For for the first uh, session uh, this morning, so the first session is um, beyond contactless to um, the new economic of virtual livelihood. Very interesting um, topics, though. Um, our speaker today for the first session is Jin Suan. Um, again, he is the um, um, the founder of Project Nourish. Um, Project Nourish is very very interesting. Uh, a combine between uh, the virtual reality experience. And dining experience, um, very interesting. Uh, the project has been featured in New York Times, Wired magazine, um, BBC, and Business Insider. So, so with, without further ado, um, Jin Suan, good morning and welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank, thank you for being here. Thank you. Of course. Of course. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction about myself before I begin my presentation. Um, well, um, I, you know, of course, you probably heard some of the introduction um, from you earlier, but, you know, I, I see, at the end of the day, I see myself as a designer and a bit of a researcher. Sometimes I like to tinker with things. And uh, what I'd like to tell people is that I am dedicated to enhancing people's relations. In everyday life, hmm. and I have uh, you know decade of experience uh, working over different industries, and I've worked with uh, 40 plus Fortune 500 companies, uh, and I really specialize in building, scaling, diversifying, and revamping platforms like Project Nourish or uh, you know some of the projects and clients I've done in the past, which involve things like Google Pay. Uh, you know, Nissan EV experience, um, some of the uh, games that involve sensorial components, place network. So, you know, um, I try to expose myself to like a myriad of different clients and different industries to be able to really uh, think around people's needs and problems. So, where you must be wondering, where am I right now? <laughs> Well, uh, this is a photo that I took uh, several months ago, uh, although this was in Seoul when I was quarantined for two weeks. I am stationed actually in Bangkok right now, quarantined. I just arrived just about three, three days ago, I believe. Um, and this is currently how my workstation kind of looks like. And when I initially uh, left LAX, 
this is a photo that I took. I, I thought that this walk towards the terminal was so striking to me that, you know, I wanted to share this with you. You know, this, I think this picture tells us in a very simple statement that things have changed dramatically, right? Just by wanting to travel to a different country, you know, you, you have to undergo such a, you know, interesting uh, uh, ways of attire, perhaps, or uh, safety. Uh, hello, uh, Jin Su, Jin Su, uh, can, can you hear me, Jin Su? Oh, um, th th there's been um, a, a sound, a problem a, a bit. We, we, we lost uh, your, your sound since the, since the first yellow dot. So, so can, can, can you hold uh, for a second for us uh, so, so we can fix this first? So that's a situation that can happen in, in like the virtual um, experience, though. Though. Ah, ha. So, I'm going to come and join the scene, right? Because today we're trying to solve the problem of the technical difficulties, because we're streaming all day long, right? คุณจินซูเนี่ยก็คือเป็นโฟลเดอร์ของโปรเจกต์โนริชเมื่อสักครู่ก็เพิ่งจะเล่าให้ฟังงั้นในช่วงนี้ให้คุณพงศิตเล่าเพิ่มเติมนิดนึงได้ไหมคะว่าเห็นบอกว่าโปรเจกต์แกมีความสําคัญถูกนําเสนอในสื่อต่างประเทศมากมายผมผมคิดว่าอย่างนี้ฮะเดี๋ยวระหว่างนี้เดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวยังไงช่วยบอกผมทีเดียวว่าเสาจำแล้วครับโปรเจกต์โนริชเนี่ยคือน่าผมว่าน่าสนใจอย่างนี้ฮะเพราะว่าปกติ virtual experience เวลาเราเราเราเห็นทั่วไปเนาะมันจะมันจะเป็นเซนส์ด้านสายตาก่อนเป็นเป็นการมองเห็นด้านวิชวลใช่ไหมฮะแล้วก็อย่างมากเซนส์เนี้ยพวกพวกการออกแบบเอ่อวิชวลเรเลตี้เนี่ยอย่างมากเขาก็ทําคู่กับเสียงคู่กับเซนส์ด้านหูเราเราแทบจะไม่เคยเห็นนะฮะการการใช้วิชวลเรเลตี้คู่กับเซนส์ที่มันเป็นเทสอาหารนะฮะงั้นโปรเจกต์ของของคุณจิสุวรรณเนี่ยคือคือจริงเขาเขาใช้ virtual reality นะครับคือเราเราปิดสายตาเราเราเข้าไปในโลก virtual แต่ว่าเรากำลังคีบอาหารที่มันเป็นเจลาตินอยู่อะแล้วแล้วพอเวลามีกลิ่นแล้วมีภาพมาเดี๋ยวเวลาเทสเข้าไปเนี่ยแล้วแล้ว,ลวพอภาพมันหลอกเราว่าอาหารนี่คืออะไรเราจะเราจะเทสเราเป็นอีกแบบหนึ่งสมองมันจะสั่งการอีกอย่างหนึ่งใช่ใช่การเอา virtual reality มา combine กับพวกพวกประสบการณ์ด้านด้านอาหารเนี่ยไม่ค่อยมีใครทําเท่าไหร่ก็จะเป็นโปรเจกต์ที่ที่เกิดขึ้นในเมืองนอกบ้างนะฮะเท่าที่เคยเห็นครับก็แต่ว่าทีนี้หัวข้อที่คุณจินซูจะพูดวันนี้จริงจะเป็นเรื่องเกี่ยวกับไม่ไม่ได้เป็นเรื่องเกี่ยวกับโปรเจกต์เขาล้วนๆนะครับเป็นเรื่องเกี่ยวกับเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเศรษฐกิจที่จะเปลี่ยนไปเพราะว่าตอนนี้เราเราเริ่มเห็นว่าอย่างอย่างโควิดพอเริ่มมาเนี่ยเราจะเริ่มเห็นว่าอย่างพวกพวกพวกโลกโลกเวอร์ชวลเนี่ยมันเริ่มเข้ามาแล้วอย่างอีเวนท์ที่เราทำมาอยู่วันนี้ก็เป็นตัวอย่างหนึ่งใช่ไหมฮะเพราะเราต้องมี physical distancing อย่างที่กล่าวไปใช่ไหมคะใช่ฮะพอพอเริ่มเข้ามาเนี่ยแล้วแล้วเราเริ่มเห็นบางอย่างเปลี่ยนไปเราเริ่มคือเรียกว่าเศรษฐกิจมันเริ่มเปลี่ยนหรือการการติดต่อคอนแทคการ make relationship การสร้างความสัมพันธ์มันมันเริ่มมันเริ่มเปลี่ยนไปคือเขาต้องหาบางอย่างเนี่ยมาทดแทนก็ต้องเราก็ต้องพึ่งพาในโลกของเวอร์ชวลมากขึ้นใช่ใช่คือคือเรียกว่ามันเป็นทดการทดแทนเนี่ยเป็นส่วนหนึ่งนะแต่ว่าการการเรียกว่าการทํานายว่าแล้วในอนาคตเนี่ยเรียกว่าความสัมพันธ์ของคนหรือหรือหรือการที่เรียกว่า value exchange ของสังคมมันจะเปลี่ยนไปยังไงบ้างคือสิ่งที่คุณชินซูเขาพยายามจะเล่าให้เราฟังในวันนี้ค่ะที่บอกในซีนอปซิสนะคะว่า perception และความรู้สึกต่อ connection และ trust จะเป็นยังไงจริงๆในเมื่อเราไม่ได้เจอกันต่อหน้าแล้วเราเจอกันผ่านผ่านโลกเวอร์ชวลแล้วเรื่องชีพเหล่านี้จะเป็นยังไงบ้าง
ซึ่งแกคงมีตัวอย่างดีๆที่มาบอกเล่าให้เราได้ฟังกันนะคะแต่ตอนนี้เนี่ยสัญญาณในเรื่องของการสื่อสารมาแล้วหรือยังคะยังยังยังคือจริงๆแล้วอาจจะติดต่อได้แต่สัญญาณมันไม่ชัดเจนนะคะใช่ค่ะใช่ใช่เพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยเดี๋ยวถ้าเกิดพูดไปแล้วเดี๋ยวคุณผู้ชมที่รับฟังอยู่ก็จะไม่ได้เนื้อหานะคะฉะนั้นเนี่ยก็ขออนุญาตใช้โอกาสตรงนี้ฟิกซ์ปัญหาทางเทคนิคสักเล็กน้อยนะคะวันนี้เองก็คุณพงศิริเนี่ยอยู่กับเราตลอดทั้งวันด้วยตลอดทั้งวันจริงๆถ้าผมผมอาจจะสามารถเกริ่นให้ได้เผื่อว่ามีใครที่เรียกว่าจะอยู่กับเราตลอดทั้งวันตั้งแต่เช้านี้ยัน6โมงเย็นทุ่มหนึ่งเลยว่าจะมีอะไรบ้างนะครับคือคือธีมในวันนี้เนี่ยเป็นเป็นตอนนี้เรายังอยู่ในในเซ็กชันของมาเทคเนาะมาเทคก็คือพวกมิวสิกอาร์ตรีครีเอชั่นเทคโนโลยีนะครับก็เรียกเป็นเป็นเทคโนโลยีที่ใช้กับกับโลกครีเอทีฟครับก็ที่เราจะเห็นกันอยู่บ่อยๆก็พวกทั้ง VR ไม่ว่าจะเป็นในคอนเสิร์ตเอ่ยในเกมเอ่ยนะฮะเทคโนโลยีใช้ในงานอาร์ตที่เขาแบบเดี๋ยวนี้ก็จะจะเห็นพวกมันมี immersive art ทั้งหลายอยู่ในสตูดิโอใหญ่ๆฉายโปรเจคเตอร์เข้าไปอะไรพวกนี้นะฮะหรือพวก uh, recreation ก็จะมีพวกทั้งพวกเทคโนโลยีที่ใช้กับพวกพวกการท่องเที่ยวด้วยนะใช้ใช้กับพวกเกมโดยเพราะอย่างยิ่งเลยเกมนี้อุตสาหกรรมใหญ่มากนะฮะทีเนี้ยธีมของของของมาเทคในปีนี้ครับว่าเออเราก็เราเราก็คิดกันอยู่ที่เราจะพูดเรื่องอะไรดีงั้นปีนี้ในในในวันนี้ทั้งวันเราจะเราจะเน้นกันไปที่เรื่อง virtual reality หรือ augmented reality เรียกว่าการสร้างโลกเสมือนหรือเศรษฐกิจที่มันเกิดขึ้นจากจากเรื่องโลกเสมือนเนี่ยนะครับหรือว่าการพยายามสร้างโลกเสมือนขึ้นมาแล้วเพราะคนไทยครีเอเตอร์ไทยหลายๆท่านจริงก็สร้างกันมาแล้วนะแล้วแล้วเราเราเห็นได้เยอะเหมือนกันว่ามีผลงานดีๆเยอะเลยมีผลงานบางอย่างที่คนไทยสร้างขึ้นเนี่ยแล้วต่างประเทศเขาลงข่าวเลยอะว่าว่าเฮ้ยคนไทยทําแบบนี้กันประเทศเขาบางทีเขายังยังล็อกดาวน์กันอยู่เลยประเทศเราโชคดีมากที่เราเราเปิดเรื่องเราทำอะไรกันได้ได้เยอะที่สุดในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลกในโลก Uh, yesterday, yes, of course, we had this uh, the discussion. Uh, 28 million Thais are active gamers. Uh, they are not playing Thai games or locally developed games, but these games are, are developed by international uh, companies. Uh, so the money has been moved out of the country as a result. So with this large customer base, how can we develop the local gaming industry further? Uh, so we took take a look at locally developed games and gamers. Many of these games are very well known abroad, in fact. Uh, so we like to showcase these products. Uh, these companies are local, locally based. Uh, they may have joint ventures with Uh, Japanese companies, but uh, they need support. Uh, and now I think I I, I think we be we have the audio back. Okay. คุณจินซูครับก็ขอต้อนรับกลับมาแล้วงั้นขอให้เริ่มตั้งแต่ต้นได้ไหมครับเพราะว่าเราเราเสียงหายไปตั้งแต่ตอนที่คุณนําเสนอไอ้ภาพที่มันเป็นจุดเหลืองเหลืองนะครับเพราะฉะนั้นเพื่อที่จะให้มีความต่อเนื่องสําหรับท่านผู้รับชมก็อยากจะขอให้เริ่มใหม่อีกครั้งหนึ่งเลยครับอ่ะได้ครับเอองั้นผมขอส่งใหม่ให้คุณจินซูเลยแล้วกันครับ Hi everyone สวัสดีทุกท่านนะฮะ My name is ผมชื่อจินซูอัน And I'm a product designer and a creative a n d And sometimes a creative technologist. I design platforms dedicated to enhancing human relations. And 
And I have um, 13 years of experience, over 20 industries, and work with 40 plus Fortune 500 companies. And what I like to do is uh, really help companies build, scale, diversify, and revamp platforms. And I've worked with uh, various companies over the past uh, decade or so. And I've worked on products like Google Pay, Project Nourish that you just heard about, uh, as well as uh, uh, introducing EV uh, for Nissan and various you know, projects involving sensory, a gaming streaming platform. So, you know, I've been uh, around quite a bit. Um, so you might be wondering, where am I right now? I know that there's a background behind me, virtual background, but where am I really? Um, I'm actually at a hotel quarantined in uh, Bangkok. Um, this is actually my second quarantine. The photo you're seeing right now is a photo from Seoul when uh, I was quarantined there for two weeks. And uh, this is how my workstation looked like. And before I came to this, uh, you know, uh, been through qu quite a couple of quarantine process, I was uh, flying out to Seoul from LAX. And, and here's a photo that I, I took that really had a profound impact on me. And it, I think it's a great example of uh, how our world has changed over the years. And just by traveling, you are witnessing or experiencing the need to protect yourself in ways that are uh, quite different than what it used to be. So the story is going to start from this uh, yellow dot. This yellow dot is going to represent you. And the green dots represent the people around us. Uh, it could be uh, family members or uh, a friend, whoever that we interact with on an everyday basis, right? And the talk today is going to be really about the relationship within. And the talk is going to cover things like, uh, excuse me, I think there's Sorry about that. There was a quarantine uh, temperature check right now, so which I didn't realize was going to be happening. Uh, anyway, um, the framework is going to really going to be talking about the uh, the relationship within and the trust and how it affects our uh, relationship with friends and families and and I'm going to give you some tips on how to design products around the current times. So the, in the first section, I'll be talking about uh, the new, what the new reality of the epidemic means to us in the, in the post period. Uh, and then the second part is going to talk about what virtual livelihood means. And then later on, I'm going to talk about how this virtual livelihood affects our trust and relationship and thus how a product or platform should be designed accordingly. So I want to start with this image uh, by a uh, painting by Rene Magritte. And, you know, I'm sure you've all seen this famous painting, but one of the paintings that uh, 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 drawn by the artist in 1928 is this piece titled Men and Woman. And this piece is particularly striking because it brings out this surreal nature of uh, human relationship, right? But then after the COVID, we realized that history is somewhat repeating itself, except that what we, the image that we saw previously was a, um, a you know, hyper-reality, right? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an image that is depicting something that doesn't exist. And here we are seeing this play out in real life. And it has happened before as well in 1937 and in 1960s, right, with the epidemic happening across the globe. So what, what it means is that the meaning of intimacy has first changed, right? And the second conclusion we can get from this really simple example is that the reality has also been radically altered, right? But the second piece, I want you to kind of hold on to this thought for a second and then focus on the first which is really uh, about 
intimacy, our connection with others. And when you look up the definition of intimacy, it means close familiarity of friend or closeness, right? What this is really talking about is, is the, the space within. And when we're talking about the space, spaces that surround us or yourself or myself, uh, there's a term called proxemics. And it is invented by uh, this anthropologist, Edward Hall, in 1960s. And what it means is that uh, the proxemics, uh, you know, states that we have these boundaries, set of boundaries that are uh, invisible, but uh, allow us to uh, figure out who we interact with and how much trust to sort of give to each person based on, you know, sort of role they play in our lives. So we're going to start with intimacy and it starts somewhere around the zone of a 45 centimeter in radius and then expands out into a more public area, which becomes more personal, larger area, and then social, and then ultimately it becomes a public, right? So as you go through these levels, the level of trust changes, but as, as well as uh, as well as how you interact with them, right? The methods of interaction, the tools that you use change over time. So how did COVID-19 change this? Well, during the first phase, um, it might have been quite normal, as you can see right now, but as the COVID-19 spreads, we uh, a gap started to happen in our space. So the gap is represented by this red circle. And as the phase, uh, phases become more mature uh, during the phases of the COVID-19, it is creating a larger sense of distrust around us, but also is actually the space around us is, the gap is getting larger and larger, right? To a point we completely lost all of the space around us and the trust. And then post-peak hit, right, which is somewhere around right now, at least for Thailand. Uh, we're back at somewhere in the middle where we're, our personal space is lost and some of our intimate space is lost, but um, we still have some larger space around us uh, that is more closer to where strangers and people that we might interact with uh, at a store or mall might um, exist. So if I were to kind of replay this in a animation, this is how it would look. So we have empty space, right? That occupies all of the spaces, going from intimacy to intimate level to public level. But then we lose all of the trust or losing spaces, right? And then we're now back at uh, the space, which I call donut. So we have a space around our vicinity, but we don't have the space around our intimate self and personal self, right? So I call this donut phenomenon because there's a hole in the middle, right? There's a gap that exists. And what this means is that this donut effect is going to have on the, our, our physical and digital lives in a way that is uh, quite unique and has never happened before in our history, which is that all of those people that used to be in our closer part of the circle within the donut hole are moving away from these spaces and then going into the digital spaces. So we're cutting out this hole and moving over to where all the digital properties and experiences live. But simultaneously, you're moving all of the uh, micro interactions that might happen. For example, let's say you're at a store or a restaurant ordering something, uh, that interaction, the subtle interaction that might happen, right, um, is, is no longer there anymore, right? because of the virus. People are afraid to make long conversations when they're at the store or 
or any kind of communication they might encounter with strangers, right? All of those which have a very profound impact on our well-being, uh, the studies found out, is actually having an ill, Ill effect when it comes to our daily well-being. So when the sleep is happening, what ends up happening is that all of the consumption for streaming, gaming, social media, online therapy, all of these digital properties are being used more and more. And the second point I want to make is that through these process, the reality is in being radically altered to that, going back to the second point I mentioned earlier. And it is happening through the leap that I discussed earlier. And so what is exactly this new reality? How do we define it? What do we call this, right? I like to call it coexistent reality. It's a term that's been throwing around uh, for the last uh, decade or so in different communities. And what it really means is that you're jumping between these realities that exist in our physical space, but also in mixed reality or virtual reality. And, you know, people tend to think mixed reality, augmented reality as like this traditional form of something that you have to wear or put in front of your face. But, uh, you know, I think fundamentally these spaces are creating a sort of hybrid of digital and a really important point that I think we need to distinct, uh, distinguish as we kind of mature through these uh, technologies. And, of course, the leap between these uh, technologies or, or the realities is, is going to be a big part of, uh, you know, uh, the, these coexistent reality. And you might think that coexistent reality is a new term. It sounds like a new term. It has never existed before, but it has been around for some time now, right? Like when you look at Instagram photos versus what really is, right? There are a lot of discrepancy between the two realities. And here's an example. So when you take a photo of a hamburger, for example, right, it might not be quite appetizing in reality. But then through the enhancement of Instagram, the hamburger might look quite delicious. But then as we get into surrealism, we uh, are able to use things like AI to generate a photo, right, from a model that we input uh, from a set of data. Uh, so. Right now, this generated AI photo doesn't quite look appetizing, but imagine what that burger could look like in the five to 10 years, right? So what I want to get to with this example is that our perspective changes based on the technology that you use. And COVID-19 has merely increased the frequency of uh, the leap and the rate of adoption. And interestingly, not for the early adopters, but for everyone on the planet, right? It forced everybody, everybody to rely on digital means much more so than ever before. So what exactly is the problem? Well, now that these realities exist, these various platforms that we create and develop needs to account for these frictions between realities. And what that means is that so here's another example of a, of a streamer, right? In the physical reality, he might look a certain way, but uh, for streamers, they're quite good at reducing these frictions. So unlike the example of a hamburger that you saw, they're actually doing, putting more effort into reducing frictions. So their digital version of themselves actually mirrors some aspect of reality in some ways. So even though they might be a little bit different, they have very similar attributes and characteristics across all three mediums. And going back to that Hamburg example again, once more, again, these uh, discrepancies are creating what we're calling a friction. And friction is essentially caused by, uh, you know, a lack of differences between these hamburgers, right? And it, it creates a sense of distress. When you post something on Instagram and how it, people, when people realize that your friends realize that your photos look quite, are misrepresentative, it creates a sense of trust. But at the same time, 
this trust, but at the same time, it, it creates an opportunity for a uh, platform developer, right? Because now we can uh, utilize things like Instagram stories, which uh, basically solve this need of discrepancy that was happening on Instagram, right? So Instagram causing this discrepancy between reality and, and fiction, Instagram later introduced this story, uh, this feature called the Instagram story to reduce any kind of discrepancies and, uh, uh, you know, feeling of uh, distrust, right? So this makes it more authentic for users when they experience because it's live. It, there's not much, uh, the content itself isn't tainted as much. And, you know, it, it's actually sharing, the user is sharing what is happening uh, without too much filters or uh, too many alteration or enhancement done being done to the photos themselves, right? And as Facebook matures through this process, they're releasing more products that help you kind of ladder up. So uh, Horizon being uh, one of their VR applications that allow you to, it's like a face, Facebook version for VR, right? VR version for Facebook, I meant. And uh, a, a, a product that solves the friction between the two uh, might be or potentially be the, the portal, which sits on top of your TV to kind of give you this immersive uh, immersiveness, right? In front of TV, being able to share a video with your family and friends. So how does this relate to uh, this concept of livelihood that you've heard at the beginning of the talk. Well, livelihood typically is defined as a set of activities essentially everyday life, right? But when it comes to virtual livelihood, I see it being compared to something like this, right? In the physical world, you might be, uh, you know, paying bills or, or taking a medicine or just eating or hanging out with friends, right? But then when you move over to social media, the set of actions or activities are very specific to the medium, right? Tweeting, uh, searching or browsing or streaming or YouTube, sending emoji. But then those set of actions are then also translated into gaming as well, right? So again, uh, the, what virtual li livelihood really means is that we're transforming these existing activities uh, within a set of our livelihoods and, and transforming it based on the medium that is most effective. So here's an example of uh, all three mediums being compared, right? You might use hand gesture, or body gesture in physical world, but in the social media, you might rely on emoji. But then in Fortnite, you might download or pay for in-game emote. But the difference between all these is that uh, unlike the physical world where things rely on yourself, your emotions and body gestures and things that don't cost us anything, there's some aspect of cost involved when you're interacting on social media and gaming, right? Ultimately, these companies have to pay for these services, servers and, and you know, cost of development and the software engineering that's behind it, right? So, uh, there is a uh, economic cost to do these things, unlike, you know, the physical world that where those things don't exist. So, what will our society look like in the future? Well, this is how I mapped out the extremes of our society. One on the left we have contact society and on the far right, we have contactless society. So as we evolve through the COVID from pre-COVID all the way to post-COVID, I decided to map this out to see if there's any kind of pattern that we can notice here. So as you can notice uh, during the pre-COVID, we were fairly much, you know, our society was pretty much around you know, around being very like in person and, and as we kind of mature through the COVID, we realized that it's becoming less 
face to face and become much more contactless, right? But then right now, we're somewhere in the middle. And after this, what might happen? Well, my prediction is that we're going to have a variety of uh, experiences ranging from sort of mid contact to mid contactless, right? And the reason is because we've now seen the extremes, right? And we know that the virus will return at some point in the future. It could be five or 10 years from now on. And, and you know, we've experienced such a extreme condition of what the virus could affect our lives that we now have created this, this range of what we need to, how we need to behave in order to be healthy and uh, but also how to you know protect ourselves right so now that this range exists this range is uh something i call interaction variability and this range or this range of interaction or the range of different ways of interacting with people or platform is going to be with us for quite some time and this brings up a whole lot of opportunity for us. And this range exists in uh, various forms, which kind of mirrors to what uh, the realities I was speaking towards earlier, which is um, in example A, a person might live in a very physically iso isolated environment, right? They could be living in a very uh, isolated uh, part of the world or a uh, part of the city or you know they could just be the type of person that just don't go out as much right an example would be like somebody like a streamer right who lives around the web 24 7 right but they're digitally connected um quite significantly right uh but in example b is the complete opposite of that right somebody who's physically connected and digitally isolated right so the whole slow movement right right now that's happening and taking place is an example of that. Um, and then the third one is a C, which I think that most of the population uh, will choose to be part of, which you know gives you a little bit of both worlds, right? Being able to kind of adapt yourself based on the circumstance, right? So when you feel that you connected yourself too much with digital uh, platforms, you might disconnect and go take a you know, break, right? By going to a uh, vacation somewhere in the woods or whatever, right? Um, so, you know, there's all these permutations that are happening, um, which goes back to this idea of interaction variability. Here's an example of interaction variability in South Korea and Seoul. Uh, on the, if you look at this, these two signs, they're essentially two baskets under these two signs. One sign says, I want to shop by myself. The other one, I want help, right? So depending on which basket you pick up with the different tags, you might be, uh, you may want some help from uh, the sales staff, right? Have this desire to have, desire to converse, right? But you may not also uh, want to converse with sales staff, right? So it gives you this different modes of interaction. Again, going back to the idea of interaction variability, right? And here's another example of what we've been uh, seeing lately, which is like, you know, van life, right? Giving you different modes of uh, living condition and how you work. And going back to that slow movement I mentioned earlier, right? And here's a different mode of uh, interacting with your audience online and, 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 you know, becoming a streamer, right, on Twitch or YouTube platform. So the, at the end of the day, we're really going back to this idea of interaction availability. And this is the future of post-COVID lives. So I, I, I cannot focus on this idea enough because this is where we will be in the next several months, and this will, will continue to be in the next five to 10 years. And I wanna now end with Q&A uh, to see if, any, if you have any questions and 
I'd love to uh, speak to you more um, via Twitter if you have any questions outside of this presentation as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jin Su. Hey, um, well, this Thank is you. very interesting, though. Like some of the terminology is very new. Um, well, I, I think I think like to to me myself, even though I'm in into like the virtual LED um, um, industry, some of the some of the terminology is very new. Now, um, for the audience, though, I have some few questions for you uh, right right now. So so. Let's let's start let let's start with the with the latest topic that you just mentioned. Then um, interaction variability. Um, are, do, do you think this? Well, well, you 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 already give us some figure that it will stay for at least five to ten years. Um, why? But like like you know, there's a debate here that okay, when mm -hmm. when COVID is gone, then everything will be back to normal. That there will be no new normal kind of. Or, or in your word, interaction, what, what variability that will sustain uh, in our society for for, um, for 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 a long period of time. Why do you think it's sustained, um, and why do you think it would at least sustain like five to ten, ten years ahead? You know, I've had this. This is a really interesting question because this is something I've been discussing and and, and debating with a lot of different areas of expertise and also my clients as well, right? Uh, a lot of executives at large corporations or, or you know, large scale operations are asking these questions. Is it gonna go back to completely back to where it used to be prior? Or are we gonna, uh, where, where is it gonna be, right? And, you know, if you look at uh, a lot of historical events, for example, um, the, the epidemic in 1960s, right? This this one happened to be in the U.S., right? But as long as that generation that experienced this are alive, their memory of this will always be there, right? So this memory, this experience for our generation has been so profound and painful, right? We never experienced anything close to this, right? Ever during our lifetime. So which means that that pain is gonna be uh, part of us till we die, right? Until the next generations of kids, right? So like basically all the babies are born after this, or like they're just so young to remember this event, of course, they're not gonna be affected by this, right? Until the next epidemic occurs, right? Which could be 10 years or 20 years from now on, right? But we know from uh, the last, uh, 15 years or so that these epidemics are going to happen much more frequently than ever before, right? So it, it gets to this, now we are, we're in this, we're faced with this dilemma of, uh, okay, we have to be always conscious of what it could happen, right? We've reached the sort of the, the height of the fear that we can experience, right? And that fear is always going to be there. So based on that fear, although through time, you may not remember as clearly about the fear that you experience, certain level of the fear that you experience will always be there, right? That's why uh, in this graph, I didn't go as far as going all the way to the right here, you know? Because over time, we forget things, right? But we're still going to remember those times. So that's why uh, the, the level in which our society will operate, I feel like will be somewhere in between these space. So this, I think line represents where we'll be quite uh, perfectly in my opinion. But I'd love to hear what others have to say in terms of what they think will happen. Because we're all looking at this sort of magical ball trying to guess what might happen. And everybody has their own opinion. So I, I'd love to kind of open that up if you guys want to uh, talk about it further after this presentation. Sure, sure. Any other I, questions? I think, I think with, with, the, 
with the um, um, forum today, that there will be a lot of discussion about this. Um, well, if, if, you're, if you stay with us uh, for, for furthermore, I think, I think you'll find a lot of um, debating on this. Um, even though I have like, some few more questions, um, um, Jin Su, but unfortunately, we, we are already out of time. Um, so, but however, I would encourage every audience, uh, in, including me as well, I'm, I'm very interested in this, um, to, if, if you have some more questions you can give to Jinsu um, afterwards, your, your um, Twitter and, and, and your contact is also at the end of, of the presentation already, right? So, Jinsu, for now, thank you very much for being here with us. Um, I hope that hey, we hey, can, can continue thank this. Much. Thank you, thank you. And I, thought, I, ho I hope that we can, can continue this um, discussion furthermore. This is, I think, very beneficial to our society. We haven't got much of this kind of, con of conversation here in Thailand. So thank you for now. I hope to see you again uh, um, pretty soon in, in, into the future. Thank you. OK, cheers. Bye. 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 ที่น่าสนใจนะคะเปิดเวทีฟอรัมกันไปเลยก็ขอขอบคุณมอเดอเรเตอร์ของเราในช่วงนี้ด้วยนะคะคุณพงศิริเหตุตระกูลกรรม